And so, brethren, we know the Messiah is coming. And what's the Messiah coming to do? Does rest restore all things seem familiar? Mm -hmm. Go to Acts chapter 3. Let's listen to God and what he's planning. Yeshua tells us over and over and over and over again, he's coming here to complete the Father's will, the Father's plan. Go to Acts chapter 3 and look at it. Acts chapter 3, we'll start reading in verse 19. He says, Repent, Acts 3, verse 19. Repent you therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. We know that things are going to be refreshed. There's going to be uh, restoration. There's going to be reconciliation. There's going to be uh, uh, restitution. He says here, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time to refresh shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached to you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. So when Messiah comes, he comes to restore. He comes to reconcile. He comes to, to, uh, to make a restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his prophets since the world began. Brethren, God, can we put it this way, gets his way. God is God. He completes his task. Mm -hmm. The intents of his heart will not be denied. Praise God for that. Mm -hmm. We worship a God that is so awesome that he can make things come about. What do you think prophecy is? It's a present written in, or future written in advance. Right? That's prophecy. That's what he says he's going to complete, what he's going to do. Now, brother, we know they, the, the Jews thought he was going to do it. They kept asking him, his disciples, is it now time? Are you going to restore all things now? Acts 1, verse 6, Luke 24, all these different places where they're asking the Messiah, are you now about to make it right? And of course he says, it's not for, yet, not for you to know. <laughs> Brethren, the Jews, his people, rejected him. And Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country. The Jews just couldn't believe the carpenter's son could do anything or know anything. See, if you're close to something, you don't value it. I can raise a bull here and show it to everybody in this county. They won't pay me anything for it, for the bull. But I might have someone drive here from Montana and pay me $25,000 for the book. They don't value because it's local. Mm -hmm. If it comes from far away, it's got to be worth more, right? <laughs> That's just what we seem to think. And we know the Jews rejected him because he was right there among them, mm -hmm. the carpenter's boy. And so Jesus was sent to, since the Jews wouldn't listen to him, he was sent to a fruitful nation. Now who's the fruitful nation that he would be sent to? Abraham. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel is the fruitful nation. The Jews would not listen to him, but the Christians, the lost sheep would the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Remember the woman at the well in John chapter four? God told her that the Father wants true worshipers. Wants what? True, true. worshipers. True worshipers that worship in spirit and, and in truth. The woman didn't know much about that. But she says, we look at, I'm looking for the Messiah. And when Jesus comes, Messiah comes, he's gonna teach us all things. And of course, Jesus told her, I'm he. The thing you have to get from that story is that the lost sheep of the house of Israel did not have a relationship with the Father. 
Who is their relationship catered to? The, uh, the Messiah. The Messiah is who she's looking for. Now, brethren, from this point on, you're going to hear some things you may disagree with, and that's okay. But I want you to think about them. We know that Jesus said, I'm only going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. He tells us that in two or three places. I've given you the verses, Matthew 10, 6, Matthew 15, 24, John 11, 52. These are verses that you no doubt know them in your, in your studies. Uh, Matthew 1, 21, Galatians 4, 4. I know I'm giving them too fast for you to write them all down, but you know the verses. And in Isaiah 49, the Messiah is to, again, restore to what? Restore. To restore the children back to the Father. Mm -hmm. What children? children the children of Israel. Right. Mm -hmm. So we understand that's what his job is. In Genesis 49, we see, indeed, in the last days, he tells us that the Messiah, Genesis 49, verses 22 to 24, the Messiah is going to be where in the last days? He's going to be in Joseph. That's where his Messiah is at. So Jesus is in Joseph. Now, who is Joseph? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? That's who Joseph is. So we understand so Jesus is in Joseph. Jesus said, I'm only sent. Take his words. I'm only sent mm -hmm. to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I ask you the question. Unless Jesus failed, who is the Christian church today? Israel. It's the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Make no mistake. You're not a bunch of pagan Gentiles that don't know God. It's the lost, lost house of, the, of, of Israel that were scattered abroad and God said, I'm going to restore all things. And so what is Jesus here to do, folks? Restore. To restore the children back to the Father. Mm -hmm. So who do the Christians of the churches today, who do they truly worship, brethren? Jesus. The Savior. They worship Jesus. <laughs> Make no mistake. Yo, it might be words we don't want to hear, but that's the truth. The churches of the world, they pray to Jesus. Does it ever interest you when the rich young man asked Jesus what he must do to have an eternal life in Matthew 19? You notice the four, ver the four commandments he never mentioned? Was the first commandment, the second commandment, the third commandment and the fourth commandment. Mm -hmm. The ones he mentioned were the last six. So brethren, let's understand. The Father seeks true worshipers that worship him in spirit and in what? And in truth. And in truth. Which day is the Christian Sabbath? Or which day, let me rephrase that. Which day is the Sabbath of the Ten Commandments? The seventh day. Sabbath. Which day is the Christian Sabbath? First Sunday, the first day, <laughs> right? Right. Now you can argue that all day long, but they'll argue back with you pretty persuasively. And so let's understand the firstborn, the priesthood, are the true worshipers. How many of the commandments they keep? All, all of them. them. All of them. And they worship the Father in spirit and in what? And in truth. truth. The truth is, brethren, God is one. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, is one Lord. Mm -hmm. The Christian church would have you believe it's three or possibly even two with the church that I grew up in. But we need to understand God is one. Mm -hmm. And he sent his son to restore all things. So let's get this. God's desire was for all Israel to be saved. Mm -hmm. Does he fail in that? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't think so, brother. I don't think so. We know that Jesus comes to complete the Father's will. And we know the firstborn pray to the Father. Mm -hmm. They obey all of the commandments. Now, the first four commandments apply to him. Mm -hmm. You can't make them apply to someone else. They apply to him. And so we understand that those who obey the commandments are in covenant 
with God. Do not misunderstand the analogy of a wife. I think many times we see when Christ comes to be the husband to the bride, to the church, we sometimes make that some kind of analogy that is makes you not feel good if you're if you're a grown man and you want to I'd rather be a husband than a wife you understand <laughs> men you know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. so we take this here wife thing as a as a, a relationship of, of uh, of course we we have intimacy and closeness and it goes along with that is sex we somehow can't get over the idea that uh, I'm a wife to the Messiah we need to realize what he's talking about is the same thing God was a, was a husband to Israel. Here's what it means. When you are a husband to a woman, you're their protector. Mm-hmm. You're their provider. Caretaker. You take care of them. You're the caretaker of this person. You love them to the point you would die for them. I think Yeshua approved his point that he was willing to die. Indeed, it's about spirit and flesh cannot come together and have sex unless the spirit brings themselves into the fleshly world, which is what happened with the angels in Genesis chapter 6. And so, brethren, when we see the understand the idea of uh, analogies in the Bible, make sure that you understand what it's all about. In Revelation 3 and verse 21, it says the bride is going to sit on Jesus' throne. Now, we may take that literally and say it's going to be one big throne. Mm -hmm. No. What he's saying is they are under his kingship. They're under his control. They're under his dominion. Their purpose is to serve him. The bride's purpose is to serve their husband, Mm -hmm. their Messiah. We understand. Now, the Lord has committed and made a way where we all can be saved. All children are saved through Jesus. Jesus is the only way. But what was he? He was the firstborn son that went ahead and prepared the way. Mm -hmm. Can we understand that? The firstborn son that went ahead and prepared the way. Did not Joseph do that? Joseph went ahead into Egypt as a slave, right? And he prepared the way so all of Israel could come in during the famine and be saved. So let's make sure we understand that indeed those who are the bride, the wife of Jesus, they are on his throne. They're under his rule, under his control. And they, again, will have eternal life because they will partake of the tree of life and live forever. Just as God was a husband to ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. Please hear me. So too, Jesus is the husband to the church. Mm -hmm. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So unless Jesus failed, unless the prophets were wrong, and we know that's not possible, Mm -hmm. who is the church? The church is the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who the church is. That's who he said he was going to. That's who Jacob said in in Genesis 49 where Jesus would be in the last days is in Joseph. And we're told that Jesus is to restore all things as God intended. So brethren, we understand that indeed there's restoration coming. Yeshua is completing God's awesome plan. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. We somehow think, well, how does it really work? Brethren, when you read your Bible, there's different groups in the Bible. We sometimes don't want to accept that. But there's a group that has changed and made him mortal. And Jesus says you're going to be like him. Is Jesus immortal? Absolutely he is. Is he chowing down on the tree of life? No. He don't need the tree of life. He is life. We get this. The first fruit, the firstborn sons of God is God's intention of what he wanted Israel to be. My priesthood. 
that loves me and serves me and honors me. The firstborn sons, who will they serve in the kingdom? God. Their primary job is to serve the Almighty God. Will they serve Jesus as well? Of course. Mm -hmm. He's the elder brother that made the plan, made the way. He's the elder brother that made it all happen. But there's a difference in those who keep all the commandments and those who don't. What did he tell us in Matthew 25? Those, when you do something to those who are the least of these, my brethren, I tell you did it unto me. You, as if you did it unto me. Okay. Make sure we get it that in the kingdom, everyone is not the same, folks. They're just not. Mm -hmm. Some are going to be immortal and some are going to need the tree of life to live forever. Some will sit on their own thrones and judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Which, by the way, is the church. The first fruit, the firstborn sons of God will sit with Jesus on their own thrones. In Revelation 20 and verse 4, it says, I saw thrones and them that sat upon them. Plural. Not one throne, but those who are the bride of Christ, whose throne do they sit on? He is. His. They're under Him. They serve Him. That's awesome, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But just understand, God says, all my people are not the same. In John chapter 10, said, Jesus said, I've got other sheep that's not of this fold. What fold was he talking about? He was talking about his 12, those that were obeying him. But he said, I got other people. In Luke 9, verse 49, 50, Peter wanted to get them to stop when they were out healing and doing wonderful works in Jesus' name. Peter said, they're not among our group. They're not a part of us. I know, brethren, you've heard some things you probably don't believe, and that's okay. But I believe the Bible is clear that there are different groups mm -hmm. that have different rewards. And some will sit on thrones and be like Jesus. And some will be with Jesus and will help him carry out the judgment of this earth, the rulership of this earth. I believe the Bible is clear on that. Any that will come God has an awesome plan. All are welcome. And his plan is for us to become his children. And he has a place for all of us. Do we all, are we all archangels? No. no. Some of us be holding the horse's bridles. Some might be holding the horse's bridles. And that's okay. <laughs> I love horses. So if I'm holding the horse's bridle, praise God. Can we say amen? Amen. So, brethren, Jesus is the Son of God. And he's carrying out God's will. See, when you start reading the Bible, don't start in Matthew. Start in Genesis. Yes. Because the story in Matthew is coming to complete the plan that's in the first part of the book. Whose plan is it? God's God the Father's plan. And what is Yeshua doing? He's coming to we'll complete, carry it out. complete the plan. Yeah. So understand. When God promised Israel to be his priesthood, if they would obey the covenant. And the covenant is the 10 commandments. We come to the New Testament and we see something different. Something different. So brethren, I hope and pray as we look at these things, we realize that God is wanting firstborn children but he's also wanting a bride. He's also wanting the church for Jesus Christ. The one who came and prepared the way. Right? But to think everyone is the same, then we'd be mistaken. But these feast days that we are keeping now shows us the very plan of God. Mm -hmm. Blessings to you. I hope as you serve him, you ask for understanding because I believe God is opening our minds to see things that maybe we've never seen before. Lessons to you.